our Bible study this week. Today we are going to be picking up on 1 Samuel 16. It is the calling of David to be the new king. And I want to thank Gina Jones for picking some of these lessons because I don't know how many times I've read this story or heard this story and, and just really missed out on so much of the power that is really being released through it. Um, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, you call each and every one of us. You summon us and you call us by name, not because of who we are, but because of who you are. Bless this time together as we uh, let your word summon us in Christ's name. Amen. As in the past, I've got the NIV and I've got the ESV side by side. They are uh, unique in the way in which they are uh, translating some of this, and it, it, it's just giving a lot to the story. Chapter 16 of 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, the prophet, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. This is that transition now where Saul has lost favor with God, Saul has turned his back on God, and now God says it's time for a new king to be anointed. Um, who's it going to be? Samuel has no clue other than he's going to Bethlehem, one of Jesse's sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he'll kill me. Again, who's he concerned about? Where are his worries? He's focused in on Samuel not on the word of the Lord or doing God's will. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. ESV doesn't say I indicate. It says I will declare to you. Now, taking this heifer, it's a uh, it's a cow. It's a female cow that has not had a calf. Uh, this was a typical sacrifice. This was normal. Um, so as this comes together, the challenge is for Samuel to really tune in and listen to God. And I want to highlight that because I think that's one of our dangers today is that we don't really listen to God. It keeps going. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Uh, they've known what all Saul's been up to over these years. And so as they see his uh, messenger, his priest coming, whew, here we go. Samuel replied, yes, in peace, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. We use that word, consecrate the elements for communion. It means literally to set them aside, to, to use them for a very special purpose. And as we consecrate them, that doesn't ever go away. They are still set aside for that special use. And that's a summons, I'm going to use that word a lot today, that is a summons on our lives that we consecrate. We set ourselves aside for this special purpose. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before me, the Lord, one of the oldest sons. But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't consider his appearance or his height. I rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. When we get to David, hear that. Jesse called Abinadab, had him pass in front of Samuel. Samuel said, nope, not him. Then he had Shammah, and Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before him. Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse said. He's tending the sheep. Samuel said, and th this is one of those phrases that it's just kind of easy to, to 
fly right past. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. I'm sitting down. Days turn into that. Samuel is showing an urgency and the priority that this has that I will not sit down. We will not sit down until you get him here. So they send for David. So he sent for them and had him brought in. Now, here's a big difference between two translations, and I want to spend a little bit of time on this. He sent for him and he brought him in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. That's the NIV. ESV, he sent for him, he brought him in. He was ruddy, ruddy. He had beautiful eyes and was handsome. Two translations, the inspired word of God, translated so different. One mentions his eyes, the other just, what's going on here? He's ruddy, unlike his brothers who were tall and handsome. Here's David, he's a commoner. He has beautiful eyes and he's handsome, but that's not the point. Samuel says, the word of the Lord came to Samuel and said, Arise, anoint him, this is he. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Now, here again is a change in the two translations. He anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Can you imagine the sibling rivalry that's going to be kicking in with this puppy? The oldest ones are all there and they, they see their little brother get anointed as king over all of Israel. Wow. ESV says, and the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. NIV says, NIV puts it, um, now the spirit of the Lord uh, I got to find it here real quick. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Powerfully versus rushed upon. Um, the, the difference in the two is David didn't make it happen. God made it happen. And as God makes this happen in his life, so he also does for you and I. Now, David, this is how God uses this story and begins to unfold it. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. Uh, here's a challenge that I want us to, to maybe let unpack in our own lives. An evil spirit, a tormenting spirit, a, a bad feeling came upon Saul from the Lord. Now, we have this happening throughout Scripture. Pharaoh, um, as Moses is working with him, trying to get the people to go, uh, and it says this, that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. There are times in our lives that things are happening that, that maybe we need to not just always blame Satan. Sometimes we need to say, okay, God, what are you saying to me? What do I need to hear from you? Uh, as Pastor Nick talked about prayer last Wednesday, prayer is more than just talking to God. Prayer is also listening to God. Now, the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. That's the NIV. Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the lyre. He will come and he'll play, and the evil spirit from God comes on you, you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I hear about Jesse and he's got David, and so David comes. When Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son, David, who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them with son, David. This all. David now is, is sent, but even in this, Jesse doesn't send him 
unprotected or alone. He sends them with some provisions just in case. Over and over again, there's so many events in this that are just, okay, we need to do everything we can and then give the rest back to God and don't worry about it. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor bearers. Now, there's a difference in these two as, again. David, it says, Saul loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer, ESV. His armor bearer, meaning the one, not one of. Is there a difference in the stories? Well, it's not a matter of Scripture contradicting Scripture. It's a matter of some of the different texts have a little bit of variances in them. The, the key within this is that David became Saul's primary armor bearer. Uh, it's understandable that Saul would have had so much stuff with him that there would have been more, but David became his favored one. He allowed David to remain in his service, for I am pleased with him. ESV doesn't say is pleased with him. It says, loved him greatly. Uh, there's developed this relationship between Saul and David that as he's not just there as his protector or armor bearer, that there is a peace which Saul has whenever David is around. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the harmful spirit departed from him. Now, as you see, I'm flipping these pages back and forth because the length of these two readings are, are really getting out of connection with one another because there are just ways in which they're saying these things. ESV tends to be more word for word. NIV tends to be more the heart or the, the, the feeling for what it's trying to say. And so there's a difference within it. The part that is accurate or the part that, that really comes out of this as the end of, of 1 Samuel 16, whenever the Spirit from God came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. It wasn't just about playing a lyre or a, a musical instrument. It was about the music that comes, the music of the Psalms. You remember David is one of the, the most prolific writers of the Psalms. When the Word of God is speaking to our hearts, when the Word of God is, is doing more than just being a noise in our lives, there's a peace which surpasses all understanding. There's the beauty of what all is happening with this. God chose David out of all of his brothers. God anointed David. God brought all these pieces together for David so that David could be the one who leads his people. Now, you know the rest of the story. Um, David didn't always do what was right in the eyes of the God either. But um, at this stage, David is listening very closely to God, and God is using him in powerful ways, even with an evil king known as Saul. Blessings on your week. Let those evil spirits, whatever they are in our lives, be put to rest too with the word of God speaking loud and clear to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.